Good morning, students. Let us see the next part now, the conditional statements and the converse. Now, the statement which can be written in the if-then form are called as the conditional statements. Now, part of the statement following if is called as the antecedent and the part following then is called as the consequent. For example, consider the statement diagonals of the rhombus are perpendicular bisector of each other. Now, this statement it can be written in the conditional form as follows. Now see the first part of this statement is the diagonals of the rhombus. So what you will write down if the given quadrilateral is a rhombus then its diagonals are perpendicular bisectors of each other. Now if the uh, so this the quadrilateral is a rhombus this becomes the antecedent and the diagonals are perpendicular bisectors of each other becomes the consequent. Now this antecedent and the consequent in a given conditional statements if they are interchanged then the resulting statement is called as the converse of the given statement. Got it? Now let us see one more conditional statement now. If the quadrilateral is a rhombus then the diagonals are perpendicular bisectors of each other. So now here this conditional statement and the converse in this example they are true. Now the converse of this is what here interchange the uh, antecedent and the consequent now. If the diagonals of the quadrilateral are perpendicular bisectors of each other then it is a rhombus. Got it? Now let us next see here this one how to write down the uh, using that uh, that uh, this one these conditional statements now they are called as the theorem and the converse of the conditional statements they are called as the converse of the given theorem. So one example is given here in this chapter about one theorem. Later on in the other chapters we will be learning so many theorems and then how to write down the given to prove and the proof of the given theorem. So let us consider for this exa example this one theorem. Now this is the star theorem. The proof of this theorem you have to learn and this can be asked in the exam. Now statement of the theorem you see here. The opposite angles formed by two intersecting lines are of equal measures. Now the first part of this is here what? The opposite angles formed. So this becomes the given. So draw the figure line AB intersects and line uh, ACD they intersect each other at the point O. So what you will write down given? Line AB and line CD intersect at point O. So second part of the or the consequent of the theorem you see then <coughs> this one the angles are of equal measure means here the what you have to prove that angle AOC is congruent to angle BOD and angle AOD is congruent to angle BOC so these two pairs of vertically opposite angles they are congruent you have to write now see the proof now proof here we know refer to the figure and see the first line of the proof angle AOC plus angle BOC is equal to 180 degree angles in a linear pair then angle BOC plus angle BOD this also is equal to 180 angles in a linear pair now comparing the statement 1 and 2 what we see that the right hand side is equal that is 180 degree so the left hand side should also be equal so angle AOC plus angle BOC this is equal to angle BOC plus angle BOD now angle BOC on both the sides will cancel and then you will write down angle AOC is congruent to angle BOD. So this means the first part of the to prove we have proved. Now for the second part we can write down similarly angle AOC it can be proved that <coughs> angle BOC is equal to angle BOD. I hope this proof is clear to all of you. Yes now see next here the practice set. 1.3. Now write the following statements in the if and then form. Opposite angles of a parallelogram are congruent. So if a quadrilateral is a parallelogram, then the opposite angles are congruent. The diagonals of the rectangle are congruent. If the diagonals of a quadrilateral are congruent, then it is a rectangle. If an in an isosceles triangle, the segment joining the vertex and the midpoint of the base is perpendicular to the base. So if the triangle is an isosceles, then the segment joining the vertex and the midpoint of the base is perpendicular to the base. Now write converses. 
Now here see these angles, uh, this statements are given you have to write down the converse. So, what you will do now in converse antecedent and the consequent parts you will interchange. The, inter, uh, the alternate angles formed by two parallel lines and their transversal are congruent. If the parallel lines are intersected by a transversal, then the alternate angles are congruent. If a pair of interior angles made by a transversal of two lines are supplementary, then the two lines are parallel. So, write down here there, what you will write down? If the parallel lines are intersected by a transversal, then the interior angles are supplementary. Then third one, the diagonals of the rectangle are congruent. If the diagonals of the quadrilateral are congruent, then it is a rectangle. Now, next let us see. Now, the problem set 1. Select the correct alternative. How many midpoint does the segment has? Answer is only 1. How many points are there in the intersection of two distinct lines? 1. How many lines are determined by 3 distinct points? 1 or 3. If the 3 line points they are collinear, then you will get a line. And if these 3 points, if they are non-collinear, then you can get 3 lines. If distance A, find distance AB if A is equal to minus 2 and B is equal to 5. Now, distance AB will be equal to 5 minus minus 2 that is 5 plus 2 equal to 7. If PQR, if Q lies between P and R and distance PQ is equal to 2 and PR is equal to 10, then find out QR. Now, seeing the betweenness relation, you can see there distance QR will be given by distance PR minus distance PQ, then minus 8 is equal to 2. Now, on a number line, the coordinates of the points PQR are 3, minus 5 and 6 respectively, state true or false. Now, PQ distance you find out here 3 minus minus 5 is equal to 3 plus 5 equal to 8. Then distance QR you find out that will be given by 6 minus minus 5 is equal to 6 plus 5 equal to 11. The distance PR you find out 6 minus 3 is equal to 3. So, what we see here 8 plus 3 is equal to 11. So, distance PQ plus distance PR is equal to distance QR. So, only this statement is true uh, and the rest all are false. Now, coordinates of some points are given. Find the distance between each pair. Now, minus 9 minus 1. So, minus 9 is less than minus 1. So, if A, are, A and B are the points whose coordinates are minus 9 and minus 1, the distance AB will be given by minus 1 minus minus 9, that is minus 1 plus 9 is equal to 8. Then x plus 3 and x minus 3. Now, distance AB will be given by x plus 3 minus <coughs> x minus 3. <coughs> so, that is equal to x plus 3 minus x plus 3. So, plus x minus x cancel that is equal to 6. Then coordinate of the point P on a number line is minus 7. Find the coordinates of the points on the number line which are a distance of 8 units from P. Let Q and R be the two points with the coordinates X and Y at a distance of 8 units from P. Now distance PR and distance PQ both are equal to 8. Now Y is point R is to the uh, to the left of P. So Y is less than minus 7. So what you will write down minus 7 minus y is equal to 8. So, minus y is equal to 8 plus 7. So, minus y is equal to 15, y will be equal to minus 15. So, coordinate of r is minus 15. Now, minus 7 is less than x. So, x minus minus 7 is equal to 8. So, x plus 7 is equal to 8. x will be equal to 8 minus 7 that is 1. So, coordinate of q is 1. Now, write the given uh, part and the to prove part between the, see the ninth sum if all the sides of the triangle are congruent then it's all angles are congruent so given is all the sides of a triangle are congruent and to prove is all angles are congruent now next one the diagonals of the parallelogram bisect each other so the given will be the quadrilateral is a parallelogram and to prove will be diagonals bisect each other now draw the label diagram showing the information in each of the following write given and to prove two equilateral triangles are similar now, given will be what triangle ABC and triangle PQR equilateral and to prove will be triangle ABC similar to triangle PQR. If angles in a linear pair are congruent, then each of them is a right angle. So, draw the figure linear pair of angles. So, given what will come here, angle ABC is congruent to angle uh, CBD. Then to prove angle ABC equal to angle ABCBD is equal to 90. 
if the altitudes drawn on two sides of a triangle are congruent then two sides are congruent so give a, so draw the figure like this as so is given segment ve perpendicular to segment ac segment ce perpendicular to segment to side AB, ab and then it is also given this altitude segment be is congruent to segment cf then you have to prove that this side ab is congruent to side ac